Good morning class. Today we're going to talk about homophones. So has anyone tell me what they think homophones are? Has anybody heard of them before? No? That's okay. So homophones are words that sound the same but have two different spellings and two different meanings. So for example, read, as in the past tense, read, like I read that book last week, or red as in the color, like my favorite color is red. So does everyone see how those sound the same, but there are two different words? All right, so one more example, uh, I as in like the body part, like see like with, through your eyes, or I as in talking about myself, like I got up and got ready for school this morning. So I'm gonna play a little video for you guys. Okay, so in that example right there, you see how they use night and night in that same sentence. You see how they were spelled differently and had different meanings. So night, spelled K-I-N-I-G-H-T, that was talking about a soldier from like a long time ago, how they dressed in all the armor. And then night, as in the opposite of day. Like last night, as in like yesterday, like at night, a night talking about the soldier was looking at me. Does everybody see? All right, they're gonna t give us some more examples. I just ate eight pieces of pie. Homophones, homophones. I can spy with my right eye. Homophones, homophones, homophones. They don't look alike. They're not spelled the same. They sound just alike. That's the homophone game. Homophones. Guys, we're gonna see how well you were paying attention to the video. Can anyone raise their hand and tell me another set of homophones they heard besides night and night, like we talked about? Uh, you're right, pear and pear, so like pears and the fruit, and then pear is in a set of something. So like they said, a pear, a set of pears. So like uh, two pears. And then, can anyone tell me one more? Raise your hand one more. We're going to do a little activity after this. All right, eight and eight. Good. That was another set. Eight is in the past tense of eat. And then eight is in the number. Like they said in the video, I ate, as in I, like eating, eight as a number, pieces of pie. I ate eight pieces of pie. Does everybody understand that? All right, so... I'm going to give you some examples, and you're going to tell me if you think it's a homophone or not. Just shout it out. Don't bother raising your hand. Uh, C and B. No, you're right. Those words just rhyme. They just have the same ending. They sound the same at the end. But the whole word doesn't sound the same. Does that make sense? All right. What about hmm, scent and scent? Right. Those are homophones because those sound like the exact same word. But one, as in the sent, S-E-N-T, is the past tense of send, and then sent, C-E-N-T, as in coins, like kind of money. So one last example for our activity, meant and bent. No, you're right. Those aren't homophones because they, again, they just rhyme. They're not, they don't sound like the exact same word. So... I'm going to pass out this worksheet to you guys. You're going to do it on your own. 
So I shouldn't hear you talking to your neighbors or asking for answers. I just want to see how well you all understand it. So put your pencils down and give me a big thumbs up when you're done. And then we'll check it as a class before we do our other activity. All right, so everybody's done? Right, perfect. So I'm gonna put this worksheet up on the smart board. And then I'm gonna take volunteers to come and you're just gonna match one pair of homophones to what you think is right. And then we're gonna talk about if it was right, great. And then if not, we're gonna talk about like which one it actually matches to and then how we can fix it. Okay, so after that, I'm gonna have a big jumbled set of homophones on the smart board. And then I'm gonna ask for more volunteers to come up and pair different homophones. So you're just gonna read the word and put them together. And we're gonna talk about what both versions of the word mean and if they're right or not. All right, now that we're done with that, I'm gonna put you all into small groups, about four or five. And then I have different stations around the room. And we're gonna take turns going to each one. And I have three sets of homophones listed. And you and your group are gonna to work together and write a sentence that includes both sets of the word. So, for example, like at station one, the first set is male and male. So they have pictures out to the side too. So if you need, help like knowing what it is like I included a picture so male as in like a boy or male as in letters or magazines that you would get in your mailbox so you're gonna write a sentence that has both versions of those of that word in it and it has to make sense and the sentence has to be right so you know the usual capitals for the beginning of a sentences and proper nouns such as days of the week or uh, names, and then punctuation at the end, you know the drill. So I'm gonna show you each station and then I'm gonna let you all get to it. So for station one, we have male and male, uh, aunt and aunt, and nose and nose. For station two, we have hair and hair, fowl and fowl, and whale and whale. For station three, there's heel and heel, witch and witch, and ball and ball. Uh, for station four, we have pause and pause, groan and groan, and road and road. So then five is cheap and cheap, plain and plain, and pale and pale. And then the last one, station six, is C and C. Sale and sale and dough and dough. So after we're all done with those stations, we're going to come back as a class and I'll take some volunteers to read their sentences for me. So... At the end, they would come back calling a few volunteers, so they would read sentences such as, uh, like station one, Abby's aunt screamed when she saw the ant crawling across her lunch. Or, uh, after a dog bit his heel, Adam had to put medicine and a band-aid on it so it would heal. Um, last example, um, the farmer rode his horse down the dirt road. So, that's my lesson for the second one, teaching lesson two, but like I said, I would, first of all, I'd show that video and like discuss the examples throughout the video so they can start to make connections themselves. And then for their independent work after the video, I'd give them some independent practice doing this worksheet and then just putting it up on the smart board so they can like use the little pens to like match it themselves and we talk about it if it was right i'd make them describe the difference between the two words and it was wrong we'd fix it to, together right then and then after that the smart board activity with the jumbled homophones i mean i don't have a smart board in my house but i would just put like the different 
homophones like scattered throughout and I would call on volunteers to come and like put each set together and they would have to explain the difference between the two words. And then once they had done that, I'd put them in groups, so like partner work, and then they'd go around to the different stations. I mean, I'm not gonna, I can't tape these to my wall, but I would have them like taped around the room. And then it's like each group would start a different one. And then once they were done, they would just rotate until they'd been to each station. And when they would come back, I would uh, like call on volunteers. And then for an exit ticket as a form of assessment or closure, I'd have them take like three of the sentences that they wrote and draw a picture of it. So they, again, they would have to include both forms of the homophone. So like, for example, like the hair had long brown hair. They would just draw a picture of a hair with long brown hair, like a bunny with long hair. Or what else? Like Sarah began to bawl after her older brother kicked her new ball over the fence. They would draw a picture of a girl crying in a ball over a fence or something just to show that they understand how even though they sound the same, they're two completely different versions of the word and show they understand the difference between the two words. And then the standard I'd use is L.2.4a, so it's a second grade lesson under language and using sentence level context as a clue to meaning of a word or phrase. So they would have to use a sentence like at the beginning to determine which word it was, like which homophone it was. So by using like in the video night and night at the same sentence, in the same sentence they'd have to use context clues to try and determine like which word went where to make it make sense. And then the learning objective is students can identify homophones and correctly explain the difference between the words, and students can write a complete sentence utilizing both forms of the homophone. So again, they would have to identify correct homophones and know that they know the difference between the two words, like know they're not the same word, they have two different meanings. And then also they would have to, I'd assess their like writing skills by being able to write a complete sentence with correct capitalization, punctuation, and like making them that sentence make sense. They're in second grade, so they're starting to learn how to put together complete proper sentences at that point. And for ELL special ed accommodations, uh, I have pictures on the worksheet and the stations. So if they can't read the word under it, they can at least look at the picture and kind of gain clues to what it is. And in one of my diversity and education classes, they I get said that ELL students read better than read English better than they speak English. So they'd probably be more likely to be able to read the word. And even if they didn't know like what it was, there's the picture out to the side to help them decipher like what it means. And then again, as the exit ticket, just set them so I know that they know like the difference between the two, but thanks.